A cantilevered staircase is a striking architectural feature that brings a modern and light feel to your home. But how do you build stairs that appear to be floating? In this video, we will discover the main design and construction principles involved in creating such a floating staircase. This video is divided into two parts. Part one covers the design principles, whereas part two focuses on the construction principles. This is part one, design principles. To design any type of staircase, we need to know the floor-to-floor -floor dimension. This is the height difference between two finished floor levels that the staircase is going to connect. Here in the UK, the levels correspond to the Ordnance Survey, where the datum is sea level at plus zero. These levels can be found in floor plans and other building drawings, with units given in metres. Now let's consider this space between two floors. Let's assume that the finished floor level, or FFL, of ground floor is zero, and that finished floor level of the first floor is 2.850. Now we simply calculate the difference between these two levels, meaning our floor-to-floor -floor dimension is 2850. Now we need to understand the main variables in staircase design. First one is rise, which is the vertical distance between treads. The second is going, which is the horizontal distance between treads. And the third one is pitch, which is the angle of the stairs. Together, these three variables determine the safety and comfort of the staircase. In the UK building regulations, range for rise is specified as 150 to 220 and the range for going is given as 220 to 300. We can also see that the maximum pitch for a private stair is 42 degrees. Now let's calculate rise. We know that our floor-to-floor -floor dimension is 2850, and the range given in regulations is 150 to 220. We now choose a dimension within that range and divide the floor-to-floor -floor dimension with that number. For example, let's try a number in the middle of the range, which is 185. If we divide 2850 by 185, we get 15.41. The number of risers must be a whole number, so this dimension does not work. Instead, we can round it to the nearest whole number and try again. So 2850 divided by 15 gives us 190. This means we will have 15 rises at 190 millimeters. Next, we need to determine the going. We know the range given in regulations is 220 to 300. The going is typically determined by site conditions and how much space there is for staircase landings. For tighter spaces and shorter stairs, the value is going to be closer to 220 and vice versa. In this case, we have chosen 280 millimeters. If we refer back to the building regulations, we can see there is an equation called the normal relationship between the dimensions of the rise and going we can use. This normal relationship or normal ratio is given as two times R plus G equals a value between 550 and 700 where R equals rise and G equals going. Now we simply input our values, so 2 times 190 plus 280 equals 660. The result falls within the given range, so we can now move on to the last variable, which is the pitch. We know that pitch equals total rise divided by total going, and the maximum allowed angle is 42 degrees. Typically, a preferred angle for comfort and safety would be in the range of 31 to 35 degrees. Now let's draw this out. We have the total rise, which is 2850, and we have the total going, which is 15 times 280. We can now make this into a right triangle and use basic geometry to find angle theta. To find the tangent, we simply divide total rise by total going. Then we calculate the inverse tangent, which gives us 34 degrees, which satisfies our criteria. 
With the main variables now calculated, let's move on to the staircase support structure assembly. First, we have the stringer. This is the backbone of the assembly, which needs to be strong enough to withstand all stresses and rotational forces introduced during everyday use. Next, we have tread supports that provide the main support for the cantilevered step. At the end of these treads, there is an end gap with treaded holes, providing a fixed point for the glass balustrade. Finally, cover plates are tack welded to either side of the tread, providing additional stiffness and a surface for fixing the timber treads. Together, these components create a structural assembly, which is now ready to take on the user loads and transfer them safely into the supporting wall structure. To verify the design before manufacture, we can run a finite element analysis, or FEA, to simulate real-life conditions and user loads. Once the analysis is complete, components are ready to be issued out for CNC cutting and fabrication. Which brings us to part two, construction principles. Setting out hole positions can be difficult and inaccurate by hand, so a CNC cut plywood template can be used to mark the exact locations for drilling. Once holes have been drilled and cleaned, anchor resin is used to fix high tensile studs into the reinforced concrete. The steelwork can now be installed. The studs locate into clearance holes in the stringers, which are then secured with locking nuts. With the steelwork securely in place, the interior walls can be constructed. The wall detail will vary with each project, depending on the type of building. But here we can see a gyp frame system fixed to the concrete wall, finished with a plasterboard and skim coat finish. With the wall finish complete, timber treads can be installed onto the cantilevered treads. At the end of these treads, standoff bases screw into place to provide a fixing for the glass balustrade. The toughened glass balustrades are manufactured with holes to match each of the standoff base locations. Once they are lifted into place, standoff caps are screwed on and tightened with a C-spanner to securely lock the glass into position. And finally, a handrail can be installed to complete the staircase assembly. To find out more about the design process and gain access to our manufacturing files, please click on the link in the description. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.